Sir, are you are you the gentleman that was arrested yesterday? One of, one of one of them? Would you mind being on film and telling us what happened? Okay, so this is the gentleman. Um, if you wouldn't mind just giving us your name, your first name, if you're not. My name is Garrett. Garrett. And uh, what happened to you yesterday? Uh, yesterday, uh, the charges now that are being brought against me, there are three misdemeanor charges. They stem in this order. Uh, the police officer that came in told the magistrate here, which is supposed to be a checks and balances system, but really is just a way for the police officers to bring you in unconstitutionally and give you no rights. Uh, the first charge against me is impeding obstruction of a vehicle, which everybody knows that every single vehicle here made it into the conference yesterday. Okay, every so vehicle. Yeah, the first charge was? In, in obstructing a vehicle, impeding a vehicle from entering the premises. That's my first charge. The next charge is going to be, uh, as I'm stepping back, and I do have it on videotape, much everybody else from different angles has it, that I, have it as I, was, well. I was told that, uh, excuse me, the magistrate was told by the police officer that I stood there just disregarded the order to move from in front of the vehicle. They had to physically move me. Once they did that, I resisted arrest, but because they're going to be nice to me, instead of resisting arrest, they're going to get me for disorderly conduct. So that's the story. That is the second charge that I was charged with last night. And to continue that, as I'm being drug away, two different officers, whoa, smell that alcohol? They start, that's that crowd dropping the hints into the crowd. That starts the Jones effect. It's long been used. You say one thing in a crowd at one end, the telephone game brings it down to the other end. Pretty soon, hey, you remember that drunk guy that got arrested yesterday? That story didn't make it here today. So what was Too the actual people. story? What actually happened? That's exact. Uh, the, what exactly happened was I was going back and forth between the crosswalk, corner to corner. Every time I would do so, I was filming, just talking. I did not have him bullhorn, anything of the sort. Just yelling, hollering at him, recording. Another vehicle, every time a vehicle was to come up, oh, they got me, oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Another vehicle was to come up, I chose right then to cross the road. What I was told at that point is that if you block any vehicles from entering the conference, you're going to be arrested. I kept moving and I was walking backwards at the time. Yeah. And don't walk backwards. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, and I, again, we, I was walking backwards, then again, corner to corner, every car that came in. The last car, what happened was, there was a three-car convoy. I got to the third one. The whole crowd came out right right around. We were all getting our pictures. I stepped around, got my shot in the side. As soon as I did that, the other two guys that almost got hit by that same vehicle jumped back. They went around to the right, and I'm still filming. And that's the only, I didn't realize it yesterday until I watched the video last night or two this morning that as soon as I stepped back, I had nobody be. I thought half the people were behind me. There was nobody behind me. Classic snatch and grab, militarized technique. Isolate one, pick them off. And what happens, even on my videotape from the other videotapes, you see the gentleman come out and the sergeant, I'm backing up, he's telling people, again, you need to get across the road. I go, sir, I'm, I'm, I'm moving. You can visibly tell I'm moving just fine. He looks over his shoulder. You see the one guy that we have plenty of pictures of who is not a cop. No police officer in the world stands like that ready to shoot somebody for no reason because all the other cops aren't standing like these other fellows that have the earpiece, no name tags, and they're holding their weapons constantly. That that man is posted up. You see him? I saw the other guy posted up again through the video, not in real time because I'm looking through my camera. Uh, the police officer then looks over his shoulder, sees those two gentlemen are in place, 10 15. Four officers swarm on me and swoop me up, throw me in the car and take me off to jail where subject, sub, subject to uh, grabbing of the genitals, thumb in the anus, you name it. There's no reason to have five pat downs. I understand the pat down here. I understand it. I understand the pat down when you get to the premises. What I don't understand is the pat down under supervision the entire time, under lockdown, why the third pat down required after I was instructed how the pat down would go down. The back of the hand, back of the thigh, back of the hand, inside of the thigh, no invasiveness. He palms from underneath down, grabs my genitals, pulls down, then gives me a shove with the thumb. You know, after that guy steps away, another officer, for whatever reason, says, Oh, we'll give you another one. I didn't see it. I didn't see you get patted down. So he pushes me against the wall. Once again, I get the underneath genital, and that, he got a hold of me, and I pushed back, you know, he got my. my, my I, it's a natural reaction. As soon as I did that, he pushed my hips forward and he went for over the top and did say, oh, I thought I felt something. He knows what he felt. He knows exactly what he did. 
I go over, I get my forced inoculation. This right so here. what happened? They took a needle and stuck it into your arm and right you were here. Getting, okay. Right here. That's a TB shot for absolutely no reason. It's hard. Here, let me get, um, let me actually just zoom in. It's a lot easier for me to do that. Yeah, here, here. Oh, I got it. Oh, hey, thanks. All right, so we're going to zoom in here. If you can see that, that mark there is red, and I can tell you from I, from me being here in person, it is definitely a mark that you would get when you're, you have a shot or you're inoculated. Okay, so, um, oops, there's my second camera. So, uh, what, so they, what did they tell you that, uh, did they ask you if you were submitting to this uh, inoculation? She told me I had to take it. I said, do I have to? And she said, well, no, you don't have to, but then we're going to put you in that cell by yourself. You won't be able to bond out because you're not going to receive a phone call. You won't be able to speak to any legal representation. You'll see the judge in the morning. Then we're going to put you back in that room till your court date, which I believe, and she didn't have the court date, but it's July 11th. So they were going to put me in a cell, supposedly, by myself. Again, that's when the cameras are gone. That's They barely had any cameras in there anyway, but that's, I had no choice. I said, I am not submitting to this. I put my arm out. I would not watch. I said, I am not submitting to this. I do not want this to happen. Pink, and she gets me. Within Did they tell you what it was? TB. A test, tuberculosis test? test? Tuberculosis test, saying that she was going to be somehow able to read it right then. Which a nurse here has already said. It takes several days. I've had two tuberculosis tests because I had to uh, volunteer at a hospital, yep. and they I, told me it takes several days for those results yep. to come and through. And I just learned that today. I knew that last night just by the way I was being. You know when you're being lied to. You know exactly when something's going on that shouldn't be. It's a moral right and wrong that all of us have. After she after she sticks me, it's 30 seconds before I taste whatever that was on my tongue. The other gentleman arrest can, arrested with me can vouch for this 100%. He, he saw it immediately. I was gagging. Wait, so the other gentleman arrested was also vaccinated or given this yes. tuberculosis yes. test? Yes, he was. Wow. He, he was. Again, he's been around. Uh, you'll see him in the Ron Paul shirt, uh, shirt, Eric Clark, another patriot, good man yesterday. Did his best he could, but they tortured a 55-year-old. They didn't molest him. They, they they came after me for that business. As far as I'm concerned, I didn't see anything, but they kept us separated for a reason. That's the best tactic they can do is isolation. Uh, so you tasted something on your tongue it, after it, the I've, vaccination? I've had plenty of shots from the military shot? before. What kind of, what kind of metallic. Metallic like, like, I was, like I was licking metal, like I licked some silver, you know, like a nickel. If you were to look like a nickel, that, that same kind of taste. Within five minutes, I have a titanium plate here, here, and here. My eye begins to pound in a way. I, I, I get migraines once in a while. Nothing like this ever before. It literally was shutting me down. They asked me to move, and when I stood up, I'm, like, I'm dry heaving. Sir, can I get some water? No. You can't have any water. This is three hours into from time being to time here. Can I just get some water? I don't, I don't feel very well right now. Okay, come here. Puts me against the wall yet again for not yet another pat down. This is oh, after this is after the TB, the so-called, you know, my DNA, whatever the whatever they injected me with yesterday. Because she told me they weren't going to inject me with anything. You know, you, it was a choice of two evils yesterday. Do I make the phone call to get out of here, or do I sit in a cell by myself? contemplating what's going to happen to me if I stay in here any longer. At least if I get out after this, I got a shot at protecting myself or not being poisoned somehow. So what was the reason that they, they said that they were going to keep you in the cell? If I did not take this shot, I would not be offered a phone call, I would not be offered any legal representation, and I would sit in the cell no by legal myself. Representation? Yep. I was told I could not make any phone call to any lawyer. I could call the bondsman. They didn't tell you why that was the case. They, they took away my every every right. They know that I'm from Oregon. Everyone I would need to call. How do you how do you make the call? You have to do it collect where they can listen in. I didn't want to jeopardize anybody at the house. I called one person. I had them take care of it. And that again, that's just adding another person to the system who you call for for help. But it got me out at midnight. It got me to where I could record everything in detail on paper. And, and here we are today. You Where know are the videos. Uh, the videos up right now. Of, I know I have some of your arrest, but I was not close enough to hear the audio. So yeah, a, a couple people. Uh, again, I haven't been doing any. I've just been trying to network. That's all I've been trying to do from this point on is get everybody's information. Put the billboard down there. A ginormous billboard for a reason. Get everything. I'm gonna have a pen and paper before I leave here. Just give me everything you have. Uh, anything about the arrest, they're trumped up charges, we already know that. 
I'm not worried about it. Okay. What I, what I what I don't want is is I already know that the man that was grabbed here, the innocent guy that didn't do anything today, was bumped off the curb, just walking up, had no idea what's going on. He was taken. He'll also be given the shot if he does. He'll he'll be given the shot. Same with that lady. Be given this shot. You will not be released unless you take this shot. Now, I'm being told here that um, refusal would mean that they wouldn't let you back into the general population, presumably under the idea that you might be contagious with something, something of that, of that nature, but I, don't, I still don't understand why you were refused legal representation. But I was not uh, allowed, to, I was not read my rights. Nobody read their rights. <laughs> uh, nobody read their rights, which when I asked the magistrate about that, he said, you're not charged yet until I make the dis until I give the probable right. cause, but I'm in cuffs, detained. So he used the word detained, but then after, not arrested, but then they read off the charges of putting me in jail and processing me. Again, I'm not read any sort of rights because I'm told in the Commonwealth of Virginia they don't have to. That direct verbatim from the police officer and the magistrate that was on duty. They do not have to. Just like the alcohol. They don't have, I demanded a breathalyzer test. Demanded it. I asked nicely, was laughed at. Oh, we don't have to do that. The officer here said you're drunk. I believe, you're, you're visibly upset. Well, upset and drunk are two different things. Take me to the breathalyzer test and I'll blow zero zero right now. I'm not the judge. I don't take on any evidence. But wait, you listen as it checks and balances to the officer and the civilian. So I'm a civilian, no record. Another elderly gentleman, no record. Witness, two against one. Officer makes up a fabricated story. He didn't hear us. What was the officer's story? The officer's story was, as I just told her, that I stepped in front of a vehicle. I looked over my shoulder and was told to move, get out of the way. I disregarded the order and stood right in front of the vehicle, and then they came up to grab me. When they grabbed me, I resisted, resisted. which is now disorderly conduct because they were trying to be nice. And then, as I'm being drug away, you get the two officers laughing, and they're like, Whoa, oh, you smell that alcohol? Woo! That's somebody intoxicated over here. Well, I've seen so the, what really happened, and, and what I witnessed at least, was that you were stepping across the street, taking some photos, you uh, took one step backwards, and the police officer came up behind you, and then all of a sudden you were being detained, and it looked like you exactly. were being arrested. They, they can get me for not moving if they stop you from moving. It, it's a catch-22. That's I knew it as soon as he was walking towards me. I'm not going to stop moving. I understand that. I told him that. You hear me on my own video say it. Okay, just answer my question, sir. I'll keep moving, but answer my question. What is illegal about going corner to corner? Does a pedestrian have the right-of-way in the Commonwealth yes, of Virginia? Do. Do. As far as I know, that car has to stop and not use it to scare me out of the way, which was happening, and I got fed up with it because the police officers, if they're not going to do anything about vehicular assault, I'm going to. I'm going to document it, which, again, I have on video when I have my leg. I Yelling, hey, I saw hey. a gentleman that was almost hit by that last van. Was that you? Yep. Okay. That's, That's what I thought. So I how am I standing in front of the car that hit, that came right by, you know, the van or whatever the heck it was, the, the SUV type. Not sure van, SUV, but it was the big rig. Yeah, it was. The, Stepped yeah. off to the side, and that, like I said, when you see it on video, better than anything, you see the crowd ship, you see him look over, you see him pinwheel over. You know, I, I, again, I thought people were behind me. I was very, very sadly mistaken. Yeah. They where separate. That, that's the, the true snatch and grab. Where will that video be uploaded to? Do you have that video? Your video again? that you were taking. My video, it, it, I'll put it on my Facebook. That's really the Facebook? only. Uh, G, uh, G. Cavett at uh, Facebook. Uh, face, what's that? C A V, as in Victor, E T T. Okay. But again, I know everything. I'm, yeah, go ahead and make it public so we can watch the, at least we, just the we'll, video. We'll not, like don't make your whole Facebook public if this isn't no, already. No, no, no. But just make that video, video public so yes. that we can uh, we can share that. I also got video of, of what happened from beginning so. to end. I don't know how clear the quality is. I'll have to review. I haven't reviewed my footage yet. But um, if I do have anything, I'll definitely forward it. Yes, I appreciate that. I appreciate everybody that's here. Again, they're, they're doing it to themselves. There's more media here than there, there's ever been coverage. And we got it all. We have it from the angles. We have... You know exactly what they're doing wrong. Why we're here? Yeah. They're doing it to themselves. Yeah. You know, and like Absolutely. I told everybody, I understand what it means to have a mortgage and a car payment, taking care of your kids. It's not the right answer if you're trapped. If you're trapped. You're not living. Have you you're, talked to the oath keepers about this yet? A, a little bit, not much. Uh, again, I, I was very unfamiliar even with what the oath 
keepers work. Exactly what they do. See? And, yeah. and there you go. So I, I sat down a little bit, uh, but the gentleman was in the middle of an interview. I didn't want to interrupt. And then it's just been back and forth madness, with, uh, as you see, with everybody. You know, everybody's really pumped up right now. Everybody's really happy that there's so many people here. I, I can be happier. Like right now, again, from Oregon, for a reason, to see it for myself. And I, I, there you go, firsthand. Where in Oregon are you from? From Portland. From Portland, me yep. as well. Really? Um, you're actually being, uh, you're live on Occupy Portland uh, right Thank now. You. So. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. My home state, I cannot Absolutely. believe it. Thank you. That, that's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, why, why did you come such a long way? It, for every soldier that's trapped, for every police officer, because I do have a couple that are soldiers or citizen soldiers in the National Guard. You guys know who you are. I'm sorry. Uh, we know you're trapped, we know it's a system, the more of you that do what we're doing now, the better. That's why I'm here, it's just because it cost so much to get here, it cost everything we had. We were going to come eight deep in a van, couldn't afford to because people would have lost their jobs, which, there goes their ha it's a system, it's a system where you don't do what you're told, you'll lose everything. There's a reason for it. It's control. It's just a solid control measure. The only reason I'm able to come is because the other people that covered down for me back in Portland, and I thank every one of you. You all know what you're doing right now to protect my interests, and I thank you. Thank every one of you for being there for me. All the phone calls last night with my phone being dead, the fact that every one of you knew that something happened that I didn't cause, that shows the utmost integrity and loyalty for all my fellow Oregonians that know me personally. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, um, thank you very much, and I wish you the best, and uh, we'll swap some information. Yes, and definitely. Thank you very keep much. Keep in touch. I mean, yeah, you're from, from the hometown. Yes, so. thank you very awesome. much for being thank here, too. Thank you so much. I'm going to shake your hand, sir. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, for sure.